Okay, now we're going to um, work on the eye, and we again want to continue to build on an axis. So I'm going to build on this green axis. I'm going to go solid, sphere, center, radius. I'm going to have snap on, and I'm going to snap here and click on um, the green axis. I'm going to pull out a five unit sphere. Zoom in a little bit. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to select it, and I'm going to um, copy and paste it. It's going to be Control C, Control V, and now to know for sure if I've got that, I can click on it, and I can see that now it's asking me which surface do I want. So that means I have two. I'm going to select one of them and go up here to hide, and hide one of them for the time being. Now I'm going to select the visible one, go up to surface, offset surfaces, and I want an offset of about one. So if it doesn't say one up here, you need to type in one and hit enter and that will put a, another sphere that is one unit larger in radius than the previous one. Now, I'm going to take curve interpolate points and I'm going to take snap off and I'm going to draw a line here that I'm going to cut in for the eye. This is going to be the eyelid. And again, it's going beyond the, the edge of the surface here. We're going to go to split. I'm going to select both spheres for objects to split and then hit enter when done so I'm going to right click and then cutting object is this line right here and enter when done so now that's split I can hit delete and um, I don't need this cutting object anymore that split that and now it's going to reveal if we zoom out here um, we got a kind of a Pac-Man thing we have two shells and this is very similar to the helmet that we've done before. Now we're going to do again surface blend. We're going to choose the first segment. And in this case it only goes halfway around so we want to select very close to the end. Not out here, very close to the end. Enter for the first surface. We'll do that for the second surface as well. And enter. And now we get those arrows again just like we did on the neck of the duck and they need to be pointed the same direction and and basically the same place. If I want to make sure I can pull them down here a little bit, there's something kind of strange happening over here. So I can pull them down so I know that they're even. Hit enter, which is right click in this case. I can adjust the end bulge. I'm not going to at this point. And now I have um, that blended surface. Now I'm going to select everything and I'm going to go to edit and group and group that all so that um, it all moves together. Then I'm going to reveal that uh, inside sphere that we hit a moment ago. We're going to right click on the, the button hide and going to reveal that, that uh, eyeball. Now I'm going to click on my group and I'm going to hide my group because I don't want to work on that right at the moment. I'm going to come to the right viewport and kind of zoom in here. Now this is a sphere not a circle but we're going to draw a circle on it. So we're going to go to circle and we're going to choose the first one. And we can have snap on. And I'm going to pull out a three unit circle. I'm going to also pull out a two unit circle and then I'm going to turn snap off and I'm going to pull a small little circle for the reflection in the eye. Now, this gets a little bit tricky, if you, especially if you look in the perspective view then um, those curves are not actually <laughs> visible. So what we want to do is we want to take this sphere, which is going to be the white part of the eye, we're going to split with this first curve that we made. Uh, remember we can do this because a curve will cut a surface and the sphere is a surface not a poly surface. So if I click off of it I can see that I have a surface now and we go zoom in here in the front view you can see that it's been split. But now it's also if we look real closely it's been split in the back and it's also split that in half. We really don't care about the half and it's kinda hard to tell where we are here whether it's in the front or the back so I'm just gonna delete that back side because it's gonna be covered up anyway so that way I know when I'm selecting the iris that I'm actually selecting the front iris not the back iris. So now that we've got the iris as one uh, surface I'm going to split again. I'm going to split with this smaller uh, circle and that's going to be the pupil. 
So now if I click off, I've got a pupil. Up here you can see it a little bit easier. And then the iris, and then the white part. So now I've got the pupil, and I want to split it with this little reflection. So I go up to split, split it with this curve, enter, and now I have a surface here, the iris or the pupil, and then the white part and iris. So I'm going to select the iris, come up to the properties when you window, and go to basic, and I'm going to just make it green for the moment. Then I'm going to choose the iris or the pupil. I'm sorry, and make it black. And the default is already white, so this should be already white, and the uh, reflection should already be white. And let's see how that renders out. That's looking pretty good. So I can now uh, group that. Probably would be a good idea right now. Edit definitely be a good idea to save. I'm going to right click on the word hide and now it's going to bring my um, my eyelid back. I haven't uh, put any material on that. I probably better do that now. I'm going to make it the same color as the as the body of the duck. Okay, now we've got this floating eyeball and we need to resize it to the appropriate size and it's a little bit bigger. We just did that so it was kind of convenient size there earlier. So I'm going to go down here to, tr to scale. I'm going to click an object to scale. Actually I want everything so I better stop right now and I better group everything together. Now I'm going to scale it. I'm going to click in the center. I'm not clicking at all. I'm just pulling out a line. This is kind of a control line and now I left click and drag in to scale or I could pull out if I want it bigger but I'm going to scale it smaller now and get that. That's pretty good. Now I'm going to position in the front view but I also need to position it in the right view. I'm going to zoom extends there and I'm going to move it over in the right view. I can also look at it in the top view. Look at it here and I've kind of buried my eyeball so I may need to move it. Oh. I'm going to move it out a little bit so that it's not buried in his head. That looks pretty good there. Once I get it positioned, if I want to rotate it, I could. I could select it, the group, and rotate it here. Click in the middle and rotate his eye if I wanted to have him look cross-eyed or whatever. I could do that. Once I get it in the right position, I'm going to highlight it and go to Transform Mirror. I'm going to mirror right along this red line. That's the beauty of having everything built on the axis. I'm going to drag right here and plop that second eye in there. Now, it's looking pretty good. I'll do a quick render. Everything's looking good. But now if you look right here, you can kind of see that there's a little line here where the neck is joined with the body and there's just a little crack. So to get rid of that crack, um, we need to join the body. Now joining and uh, grouping are two different things. There's a crack right here and there's a crack right here. So I'm going to select the head, select the uh, neck, and select the body and I'm going to join it here in this little yellow and white puzzle piece. Now if we do a quick another quick render, that line should have went away. And it did. So we're about done now. Now we can right click on the blue render dot go to environment and I can put a ground plane on. I can ch choose whatever. I'm going to choose the seawater and hit OK and OK and OK and I go back up here and do a render and he's going to be underwater just like it was in the last tutorial and he's not an alligator so what we want to do is we want to maybe group everything. Grouping is different because it maintains all of its individual properties. If I joined all these, which I couldn't join the eyes anyway, um, but if I joined it again with the uh, beak, then the beak would take on the body's properties or the body would take on the beak's properties and I would uh, lose all my colors. So what I'm going to do is just drag it up here, 
so it's just slightly below the uh, the red line now here's a time if you want it to be sitting on a on a tub or something we could click on here I'm gonna have to ungroup it real quick and I could turn the control points back on um, but I've I've uh, joined them but if I wanted to I could have turned the control points on while it was still a separate piece and pulled the control points and just pushed the control points back up into the body and that could have flattened out the body but it, I've not done that right now and I don't really want to explode it um, so anyway I've I've made it I've just made it slightly below the the red line which is going to be really the water line position it here in the perspective view let's render it and now he's kind of floating a little bit high on the water I could push him down in there a little bit farther now if the scale of the water does not look correct then what we need to do and in this case it does but what we can do is go to the render gear here we go up to units and it was probably in millimeters we can change it to whatever in this case I'm going to change it back to inches and hit OK and I want to hit no here and now I render and it should change the scale of the water compared to the the duck and that actually looks a little bit better so we can do that we can also um, add some other details and I'll do that in another tutorial so we want to um, save it and we'll see you on the third video